given that they are at a breaking point. I mean, how much more can not just New Yorkers, but Americans who are seeing this in Florida? Being able to take custody of these individuals in the confines of a jail. To show you, this is not unplanned. This is not unintentional. A leader of a city like New York should be using divisive language that's going to be putting the, a target on the- More immigrants from rolling into town. This was taken just last week. Over the globe have made their minds up that they're gonna come through the southern part of the border and come into New York City. There's a budget crisis. Uh, you've got rising inflation, interest rates are high, um, services are failing. And Breaking NYC citizens go physical on migrants. Budget crisis. All right, let's dive into the juicy details of New York City's budget drama. So picture this. Over 160,000 migrants roll into the Big Apple looking for a slice of that New York life. But instead of welcoming them with open arms, the city starts sweating bullets over its budget. Now Mayor Big Shot comes out. Now Mayor Big Shot comes out swinging, blaming the whole mess on this migrant influx. He's all like, "Yo, these newcomers are draining our coffers faster than you can say tax hike." But hold on a sec, because the critics aren't buying it. A living wage where they won't be exploited and then be able to set up, uh, you know, their lives here. To show you, this is not unplanned. This is not unintentional. Over the globe have made their minds up that they're going to come through the southern part of the border and come into New York City. For years, he says the city's already at breaking point. They're putting up 50,000. Uh, one faces a top charge of tampering with physical evidence. And as I said, the remaining two charges are unsealed. They're throwing shade left and right, saying, nah, Mr. Mayor, you can't blame it all on the migrants. And you know what? They might have a point. These bunch of troubles didn't just pop up overnight like a New Year's Eve party. Nope. Some folks are pointing fingers at the city's spending habits way before the migrant wave hit. They're raising eyebrows and asking, hey, where did all that money go before these migrants even showed up? So here we are, caught in the middle of a budget showdown. On one side, you've got the mayor doing his best impression of a budget magician trying to make this whole mess disappear with a wave of his hand. But on the other side, you've got the critics armed with spreadsheets and receipts ready to expose any financial shenanigans. But wait, it gets even spicier. The critics ain't just calling out the mayor for playing the blame game. Oh no. They want the full scoop on where every single penny went before the migrants even set foot in the city. They're demanding transparency, accountability, and maybe even a little bit of humble pie from City Hall. So buckle up, folks, because this budget crisis ain't just about the migrants. It's a wild ride through the twists and turns of New York City's finances with plenty of drama and intrigue along the way. Who knows what secrets lie hidden in those budget books? Only time will tell. Impact on city finances. All right, let's break down the drama surrounding the migrant influx and its impact on NYC's piggy bank. So Mayor Bigwig is waving the budget crisis flag high, shouting from the rooftop that these migrants are going to sink the whole ship. He's painting a very bleak picture, warning that if we don't do something quick, New York City's financial future is about as bright as a blackout in Times Square. But hold the phone, because here comes the comp trailer swooping in like a financial superhero to save the day. They're throwing some serious shade at the mayor's claims, saying, hey now, let's not pin this whole mess on the migrants. According to them, the budget gap was already gaping wide open long before these newcomers hit the scene. In fact, they're pointing fingers at other budget black holes that were sucking up cash faster than you can say tax refund. You'll have a room to sleep in. You won't sleep in the street. Yet the line doesn't move at all. So I don't know how long we'll be here. There's a budget crisis. Uh, you've got rising inflation. Interest rates are high. Um, services are failing. In and so if anyone that states bring in 70,000 people to a city. New York City. And New York there. City. Well, they are just extending their contract with local hotels. Being able to take custody of these individuals in the confines of a jail. Now you can bet your bottom dollar that this ain't sitting well with everyone. Folks are scratching their heads, wondering where all that money went before the migrants even RSVP to the city's welcome party. And with concerns mounting about how to divvy up the dough, it's like trying to play Tetris with budget blocks that just won't fit. But here's the real kicker. 
Amidst all this budgetary boo-ha-ha, there's a group of people who seem to be forgotten in the shuffle. Yep, you guessed it, the migrants themselves. With the city's wallet feeling lighter than a feather in a hurricane, there's genuine worry about how to meet the needs of these newcomers. It's like trying to juggle flaming torches while walking a tightrope over a shark tank. One wrong move and things could go from bad to worse. So as the city scrambles to balance its books and figure out who's to blame for this financial fiasco, one thing's for sure, there are some tough decisions ahead. But hey, if there's one thing New Yorkers know how to do, it's roll up their sleeves and tackle the challenge head on. So grab your calculators and hold on to your hat because this budget battle is far from over. Because this budget battle is far from over. The case of sidewalk trees. Let's talk about the city's bright idea to plant trees smack dab in the middle of sidewalks because apparently we're aiming for an urban jungle vibe here. But hold on to your hat because this decision has stirred up a whole pot of controversy hotter than a New York summer day. So get this, each of these trees, the ones causing all the ruckus, costs a whopping $3,600 to both put in and take out. That's right guys, we're talking about shelling out $72 million every year just to manage these sidewalk shrubs. Now I don't know, now I don't know about you, but that sounds like a whole lot of green for, well, some greenery. But wait, it gets even better. Citizens are voicing their frustrations louder than a subway train during rush hour. They're not exactly thrilled about dodging trees while they're trying to navigate already cramped sidewalks. And don't even get them started on the sanitation nightmare these leafy additions bring, because apparently trash and doggy doo-doo seem to love hanging out around them. Now you'd think the city would wise up and put an end to this and put an end to this tree rific madness, right? Well, they did. Uh, sort of. After getting an earful from fed-up citizens, they finally decided to yank these sidewalk saplings out faster than you can say timber. But hold on a minute, because this quick fix raises some eyebrows. Sure, they admitted they messed up, but it's got folks wondering, where was the oversight? How did this tree catastrophe even get the green light in the first place? He refused a lawful order. They attempted to place them under arrest and, and the, the melee begins. They don't want to be in shelter for the rest of their lives. They're here just to get a little bit of opportunity to get out. And that they are at a breaking point. I mean, how much more can not just New Yorkers, but Americans who are seeing this in <laughs> get them to reappropriate to redirect that money they didn't they wouldn't it's like they were so focused on sprucing up the city that they forgot to you know think things through so as the dust settles and the cityscape returns to its tree free state one thing's for certain when it comes to urban planning sometimes it's best to stick to the basics and leave the sidewalks for walking and not wandering trees costly initiatives all right, buckle up folks, because we're diving into the world of expensive city initiatives that have got some people scratching their heads and others shaking their fists. First up, we've got the city dropping a cool $100 million on a public health call center. Now don't get me wrong, providing health advice over the phone sounds like a pretty nifty idea, but critics aren't exactly doing cartwheels over this one. They're raising their eyebrows so high they're practically disappearing into their hairlines, questioning whether this pricey project is really worth the dough. After all, $100 million could buy you a whole lot of band-aids and thermometers. Plus, there's the whole scalability issue. Can this call center handle the health needs of a city as big and bustling as New York? It's like trying to fit a size 12 foot into a size 6 shoe. It just ain't gonna work. A leader of a city like New York should be using divisive language that's going to be putting the, a target on the back. He is preparing for possibly getting 50 to 100 migrants here in the city each day. Realize that when it comes to migrants committing crime, what they can do is limit. <laughs> And if that wasn't enough sticker shock for you, hold on to your hat because we're about to talk about a train station project that's about 14 years in the making and counting. Yep, you heard me right, 14 years. This thing was supposed to be up running faster than you could say all aboard, but instead it's chugging along slower than a snail in molasses. And to add insult to injury, the price tag on this delayed dream, a cool $1 billion. That's enough to make even the wealthiest New Yorker clutch their pearls in disbelief. 
But here's the kicker. While the city is pouring money into these flashy projects, essential services are getting the short end of the stick. With budgets tighter than a pair of skinny jeans, folks are starting to wonder if maybe, just maybe, we should be focusing on fixing potholes and funding schools instead of building fancy call centers and train stations. So as the city continues to open its wallet for these pricey print projects, it's got some serious soul searching to do. Because at the end of the day, it's not about how shiny and new our call centers and train stations are, it's about whether we're using our resources wisely to serve the people who call the city home. Accountability and Future Concerns as New Yorkers tighten their belt and brace for tough times ahead, the clamor for accountability and transparency in city spending reaches a fever pitch. Residents demand answers as they watch essential services like phone, schools, and sanitation take a hit from budget cut. With no longer contacted, we're no longer called. <laughs> Immigrants from rolling into town. This was taken just last week. With each slash of the budgetary acts, concerns about the city's financial stability and its ability to weather future storms grow louder. In the midst of this fiscal turbulence, one thing becomes crystal clear. The need for responsible financial management and strategic planning has never been more urgent. As the city grapples with fiscal uncertainty and juggles competing priorities, it's essential to prioritize the well-being of its residents above all else. Now more than ever, New York needs leaders who are willing to roll up their sleeves, tighten their belts, and make the tough decisions necessary to navigate these choppy waters. Only with transparency, accountability, and prudent financial stewardship can the city hope to emerge stronger and more resilient in the face of whatever challenges lie ahead. That's going to do it for this video, guys. See you next time, and bye for now.